well? Like all the others. Just a muddy stream bed. All I can figure is that it must have been a long drought, and when it did rain, the earth soaked up all the water like sponge. Yeah, well, I'm afraid I'm perishing with a thirst, Dan. I mean, it's been 24 hours since I found any water. Now, to slow, How slow I down, put... David. Uh, I did spot a cabin and a well. Oh, a well. Where? Don't you think maybe we ought to ask? Yes, I suppose we should. May I have a drink? Well, why don't you ask them? Whoa! What do you want here? Well, we were just uh, getting a drink. We were a little parched. Can I help you down? We would have asked, but we didn't see anyone. Well, there isn't anyone but us. All right, drink your fill. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you headed? Oh, east and north. We're doing a little mapping for the Continental Congress. Well, um, we have plenty of rabbit stew for supper. You're welcome to share it if you like, and, and bed down in the lean-to for the night. Well, we wouldn't want to cause you any trouble. We're, we're grateful for the water. Oh, Dan, rabbit stew. My palate is very sore from an excessive beef jerky. All right, David. A little home cooking would taste good. We'll accept on the condition that we can put your horse away. Uh, thank you. That, that would be fine. We'll call you when supper's ready. Les, you did real good. They don't suspect a thing. No, they don't. Mr. Haskins was bluffing. I mean what he said he'd do to them. He wouldn't dare. Well, I certainly hope not. Daniel Boone was a man. Yes, a big man. With an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he. Daniel Boone was a man. Yes, a big man. He was brave, he was fearless, and as tough as a mighty old tree. From the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his rawhide shoe. The ribbonest, roaringest, fightingest man the frontier ever knew. Daniel Boone was a man. Yes, a big man. And he fought for America to make all America. That's right, pleasant, Mr. Boone. Well, thank you. You know, this dulcimer is uh, almost a look-alike for one I have back in my cabin called Old Sweet Talker. You know, Pa brought that from Extra County, England, 40 years ago. Well, I reckon that explains it. Mine was handed down from my grandpa, and he was born in Exeter. So maybe our forebears were neighbors. Oh, yes. Well, I can't sing for my supper, but... That's the first picture anyone's ever drawn of me. Oh, it's just a small token of my esteem for your culinary skill, Miss Leslie. You, know, you sound different from anybody I ever met before. Well, uh, <clears throat> David doesn't mean to sound uppity, but he was educated in Europe. Oh, well, I like the way it sounds. I, you mean you've been to all those places, like Rome and, and London and Madrid and Paris? Uh, just Paris and London, that's all. London. 
I mean to live in a big city one day, like Boston or Philadelphia, maybe even London. Alas, Mr. Boone doesn't seem to have enough coffee. Oh, no, thank you. Ladies, could you tell me if there's any more water, I mean, wells between here and the mountains? Oh, there's the Kester place. It's about um, 20 miles to east. Oh, it worked out fine. Miss Theodora, Miss Leslie, uh, David and I will be leaving about sunrise, so I'm sure we won't have a chance to say goodbye to you in the morning. We'd like to thank you for your fine hospitality. You're quite welcome. Mr. Boone, Mr. Scott, I hope that the lean-to will not be too uncomfortable. Oh, I can assure you that after two weeks on the trail, it will seem uh, palatial. Thank you very much, ladies, for a delightful evening. Uh, thank you for everything. Good luck to you. Good night. Oh. I feel like a viper. They're being so nice and us behind your teeth. We're only doing what we have to do. Well, it don't make me feel any better doing it. You just have your eye on that David Scott. That's what's bothering you. Les, honey, we agreed, didn't we? Yes, we did. Now, if you change your mind now, I'll understand. But if you agree... No, we agreed. I know, it's the only way. I'll be all right. You'll see. What's the matter? Careful, no sudden moves. You changed more than your clothes. Yes, what happened to the gentle young ladies we met yesterday? Never mind about that. We'll bring you breakfast once you started working. What? Did you request any employment from these ladies, Dan? I certainly didn't. Never mind about that. Let's get out and take this lantern while you go. Hold it right there. You pick up a stone, Mr. Boone? Throw. Les? Mr. Boone? Throw. Just in case we get the notion to try and run off. That's right. You see, we are women, but we're not exactly helpless and... We'd hate to have to put a hole in you in order to prove that. Those are touching sentiments. You think this is very funny, don't you? Quite frankly, Miss Theodora, I don't know what to think yet. Well, don't fret about it. We'll show you. Would you continue? Salt. Pure, solid salt. Worth almost as much as a gold mine. Dollar a bushel, maybe more. You expect us to mine this for you? We do. And you'll dig enough to fill those kegs and those baskets and those sacks, whatever else it takes to load that wagon outside. And do it before sundown. Is that so? Yes. We will get no water to drink and no food to eat. Unlawful imprisonment and forced labor. I think these ladies should be reported to the authorities. Oh, well, you'll get paid. Well, do you think that washes it clean? A dollar a day, a fair wage. But you'll get nothing unless you put in a proper day's labor. There'll always be somebody out front, watching the mine. Well, what are we going to do now? Dig some salt, I expect. You mean we're going to let those girls use us as a couple of slave laborers? You got any suggestions? Well, it shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, we do have an overwhelming physical superiority. Right. Could, uh... The shell and go out there and sneak up behind that little girl less and smack her over the head. Hit her? What? Well, you just said. I see what you mean. We do have a problem, don't we? 
Unless they have scruples against shooting men. Scruples? Those two Jezebels? Look, Dan, I'm certain we can outwit them if we put our minds to it. Well, that might be a possibility, but they've outwitted us so far on that score. That's what I think is absolutely shameless. I mean, pretending that they're helpless. And all the while, all they're doing is just trying to ensnare us. It's been going on for thousands of years. Is this the first time you noticed? Thousands of years. It's just the way women balance the scales to get even with nature for shortchanging them on muscle. Oh, you mean the way uh, they try to entice men into bonds of matrimony? You have noticed. Mm -hmm. For you. Les, is everything all right? There must be a shortage of men around here. Why? Well, it seems to me that a dollar a day is a perfectly respectable wage. Now, I'm quite sure that you can get plenty of people to help you without holding us at gunpoint. Well, I'm glad you don't think you're being underpaid. Unless, of course, there's something you haven't told us. No, we've told you all you need to know. Now, just how long do you plan keeping us here? As long as we need you. Look here. I don't know what your problem is, but... Maybe if you told us, we could help you. Just don't worry yourself about it. Get the wagon loaded, that's all. Young woman, there is a limit to my patience. You know, and mine, I hate to be goaded into pulling this trigger. Then we'd both be sorry. Mad at somebody? Yes, that snip of a girl. Maybe we should forget that they're women. She didn't tell you anything. No, and she was downright officious about it to boot. Well, I reckon we'll have to go at this sideways. particular reason or is it just a coincidence that both you and your sister call yourself by men's nicknames? Theodora, Ted, Leslie, Les? No coincidence. Pa wanted sons. Mm-hmm. Well, meaning he darn near got himself a couple? Meaning, mm-hmm. But you said it, I didn't. You always call yourself with those nicknames? What, is something wrong with that? Mm-mm. You don't approve of women who can make do without men to lean on, do you? It's not up to me to approve or disapprove. But why does it bother you so much? Bother me? Look, I'm proud of it. Mm-hmm. Well, you're doing that again. Doing what? Mm-hmm. Well, I always answer people when they talk to me. By the way, whatever happened to your Paul? He died about a year ago in the mine. He went back to work too soon after having an attack of chest pains. Well, he was as stubborn as ten mules. Mm-hmm. Like father, like son? God! Well, did you have any luck? I think so. Well, I guess there's no harm in explaining to you now why we're forced to do this. Well, this mine is all we've got. And every time we've tried to get somebody to work it for us, Haskins has threatened them and, and bedeviled them and, and so that they quit on us. Warren Haskins. I forgot, you wouldn't know about him, but everybody hereabouts does. He's, he's a bully and he's rich and, and he's used to getting his way. Well, what has he got against you? Les? In here. What are you doing here? I was worried about you. I've been explaining to them about Haskins. You have? Well, just about how he's run off everybody we've tried to get to work for us. I just want them to know what to expect when he gets wind of them being here. Well, this Haskins really must be something. Any man that can get the best of the two of you. He hasn't and he won't. 
I must admit, with all of those men in his pay, he has managed to be just a little bit bothersome. But he's, <laughs> he's probably bluffing anyway. About what? Oh, I thought Les told you. He said that he'd tar and feather the next man who came to work for us. <laughs> but that doesn't frighten you at all. Warren Haskins frighten me? Why, he couldn't do that if he kept trying for the next hundred years. Especially since it's us he's talking about. First, he's got to find out you're here. Then he's got to do that before we get that wagon load of salt into town to Gunther Miller. And by the time that's done, Mr. Warren Haskins might just as well go fishing in a rain barrel for all the good it'll do him. Who is Gunther Miller and what has delivering a wagon to him got to do with Haskins? We'll talk about that all after supper. Why you get back to work? What I can't understand is if Haskins has the whole town buffaloed, why will Gunner Miller still do business with him? Nobody buffaloes Gunner Miller. Oh, he buys and sells all over this territory. That's where we were yesterday. We went to see him. Oh, so that's why you were dressed up like that, masquerading as a couple of helpless women, to use your wiles on Gunter Miller. Well, he promised he'd buy all the salt we mined if we could deliver the first wagon load within 48 hours. But we knew we couldn't do it alone. Then we came along. I'm sorry. We couldn't risk having you turn us down if we tried to hire you. Well, you, you look like you're finished eating on your feet. And hands behind your back. Les? Why, when you've got your wagon load of salt? It's not delivered yet to Mr. Miller. I'm afraid I need you for that. And I don't intend to spend the night standing guard over you. You say uh, Haskins has men in his pay? In a manner of speaking, he uh, extends them credit during the summer months, and then he supplies them with victuals and drink and the like, and then he collects what they owe him from the skins that they trap during the following winter. And turns a handsome profit, I expect. It sounds to me as though he thinks that your salt mine is profitable too, and he probably plans to keep that for himself as well. Well, it's something like that. What I don't understand is what's to prevent the trappers from hightailing it with their season's catch? Warren Haskins. One of them tried it a couple of years ago. Scud Trumbull. Haskins spent too much tracking him down. And when he did, he dragged him back by the scruff of the neck, and now Scud helps him keep those other men in line. Sounds like a very interesting fellow. Well, he's just not one of those laced shirt merchants, that's all. But he is a high binder and a thief from all you say. Oh, why don't you just report him to the authorities? Why don't you just not give us any advice? We've been getting along just fine without your advice right up until now. And before the next sunsets, Mr. Warren Haskins is going to find himself barking up the wrong tree. Get out. Look, if Haskins does show up, we'd be much better off with four rifles and four of us shooting. If there's any shooting needed, Les and I'll handle it. Yes, but if Dan's going to drive and you won't let me have a rifle... That's in case he gets hit, we'll need a spare. Come on. How many men has Haskins got? Six or seven. Uh, and you think that you two are going to be able to... Well, uh, he won't shoot at women. Oh, well, that's a comfort. Chances are we'll get to town before Haskins even knows it. Well, if they won't shoot or chew, why don't you drive the wagon in yourself? Because he's likely to find another way to stop us. But with the two of us free to shoot at that band of weasels, at least we stand a chance of getting through no matter what he does. I know it's uncomfortable sleeping with your hands tied like that, but it can't be helped. I'm, I'm sorry. Come on, Les. Dan, this has gone far enough. We could have beaten them a dozen times. Look, let Side me tell you. over here, David, and reach down in my boot. Your knife. You had it all the time. Uh, hold it firmly. We can get our rifles and be out of here in no time. Well, now, hold on. Uh, we've got to see some place, and this is as good as any. I hadn't mind just sort of making ourselves a little more comfortable. What? Well, there's more to this Haskins business than meets the eye, and I'm curious. Curious enough to risk being shot at? Oh, I don't think it's going to go that far. We'll get our rifles back tomorrow, and you can go ahead and head on to the mountains. I'll catch up with you in two or three days. Well, I might just decide to stay with you. 
Out of curiosity? You could say that. Well, I could also say that that Miss Leslie's a fine-looking young woman. But you better be careful. Remember, you're not in London or Paris unless you're looking for a wife. A wife? You're certainly jumping to conclusions. Well, she may do a little jumping, too, if you're not careful. Remember, she's a country-bred woman, and she may put considerable store in the way you've been looking at her. Well, until our cultural patterns are drastically changed and women start proposing to men, I don't think I'll worry about it too much. Well, I'll take back what I said this afternoon. David, you, you haven't been noticing enough hmm? about women. <sighs> Good morning. His hands are untied. Oh, well, that was an astute observation. Where is he? I don't know. He's probably gone to fetch our rifles. But he... Uh... That's exactly right. Good morning, ladies. Oh, no need for that. We could have left any time last night that we were a mind to. Well, why didn't you? Because you said you needed help. Now, just to prove to you that we mean what we say, why don't you hold that rifle? David, I'm going to hitch up their horses and I need a hand. Uh, uh... Oh. When we return, a little hot coffee, if you wouldn't mind, please. Thank you. It's a trick. Well, I know it doesn't make sense after we kept them prisoners, but everything they said... I don't understand. But, uh, just to make sure, let's bring these guns in the house. Freeze, ladies. Right thoughtful of you to be carrying those two fellows' guns. Theodore! You surely are an amusing woman, Theodora. It's a pity about all that work gone for nothing. I know about your arrangement with Gunter Miller. It's a pity. And it most certainly is a pity about you two. But I warned her. Well, what are you going to do? I'm a man of my word, Miss Leslie. I do believe I made it quite clear what I do to the next man to come to work for you. Didn't I? Didn't I? I most certainly did. I don't give a hoot about your word. It just so happens they didn't go to work for us. Didn't they, Theodora? I said they didn't go to work for us. We forced them at gunpoint. Two strapping fellows like that letting you get the best of them? You calling me a liar? I am, and it grieved. It grieves me to hear you pile and lie on top of lie. Your pa would be whirling in his coffin if he heard you telling whoppers like that. If the poor man were still alive, he'd tan your hide proper for telling such outlandish fibs. So in his memory, I'm just going to have to take you on inside and do it for him. You touch me and you'll never live to see another sunrise. Mm-hmm. Let it go and I'm warning you. Put me down! Uh, Mr. Haskins, uh... It happened just as she said. And she's been a perfect gentleman. I don't recall asking you anything. Well, I know you didn't, but uh, you made such a big show about the truth, I figured you was really interested in it. Scud? And I figure a man is likely to say just about anything to save his neck. I'd be a little more careful who I threatened if I were you. Would you now, Sonny? Yes, I would. If anything happens to Mr. Boone, you'll have the whole of Boonesbury to answer to. Mr. Boone, is it? Yes. Daniel Boone. Well, we are plumb honored. Now you hear that, Theodora? You've had the famous Daniel Boone digging salt for you. I'm mighty grateful for that piece of information, Sonny. But even if it was true, Boonesburg's a mighty long ways away from here. However, no one can say I'm an unreasonable man. Miss Leslie, come up here. I believe you respect the truth, even if your sister don't. Oh, don't, don't answer him, Les. Let him just stew in his own fat juices. Well, it's true, just like Ted said. Well, in that case, back to business. My final offer, Theodora. I'm not the least bit interested in your offer. I'm interested in your getting off my property and as soon as possible. 
I said my final offer. Go chase a raccoon. Weaver, find a clean keg and fill it with well water. Williams, yep. get on inside here and take every scrap of food out of that place. Coombs, you find their packs and take any food they've got. Theodore, you leave me no choice but to starve you into good sense. What about them two? Oh, they stay here. Four hungry bellies are apt to be a bit more persuasive than two. I'm sorry to do this to you, Miss Leslie, but you can end it any time you are of a mind to. And as soon as you decide to stop being foolish, come on and let me know. We'll be up in them hills there, watching and waiting. You can rot up there, too. You have such a sweet nature, Theodora. What about their firearms? We got them all. Last chance, Theodora. Turn blue, Mr. Haskins. Weaver, get that water back up to the camp. Last chance, Theodora. It's ruining the well. For a long time to come. Let's get on back. I'm getting hungry. Theodora, don't try sneaking off to get help. I warn you, don't try it. You're right. He's not one of your lace-shirted merchants. Convict stripes would be more appropriate. You keep your nose out. It's none of your business. She, she's upset. She didn't mean it. I, I must confess, I'm very confused. I, I mean, he puts salt in their well, steals their food, takes our rifles, and she blames us when we criticize him. I'm afraid that's the point, David. It's a, a private quarrel, and outsiders are not invited. Yes, well, we're in it, whether they like it or not, and certainly not by our choice. Well, that's true, but it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. This kind of lover's quarrel usually does. Lover's quarrel? David, we're caught right in the middle of a passionate romance. It's not that I want to give up, Ted, but we've lost our chance with Mr. Miller anyway. Well, we haven't lost our chance. Well, we have... We... We have until tomorrow morning to deliver that salt. Haven't lost our chance. There is no way we can do that now. Well, of course there's a way. There's a way. There's a way. There's... There's got to be a way. How much longer do we have to sit around here like this? Till Theodore's appetite gets better of our cussedness. It's going to be dark pretty soon. The life will sneak out right under our noses. Well, their life is a trap. We're going to make sure they don't succeed. Still sitting in there, rocking and stewing. He's in there, he's up there. Anyone didn't know better, I think the two of them hated one another. Oh, isn't that the truth? Sometimes when I think about the both of them, they make me so angry. It... Well, how did you know? Well, when anyone feels that strongly, it's got to be either love or hate. There's a lot of foolish pride mixed up in this, but there's no hate in it. I know, but Ted won't admit that. She's made up her mind it was the biggest mistake of her life. She won't even talk about it. That I didn't know. What? How long have they been married? Oh, six months. Well, how long has this been going on? Oh, nearly from the first. She brought her half of the place as part of the dowry, and, and he refused to accept it. And that started it. Well, Ted places a high value on her independence. 
And he wants her to depend on him for everything. An independent woman and a prideful man. It's hardly the recipe for a calm marriage. Well, they've been fighting constantly about it. She finally moved back here with me. She just told herself that it was a big mistake, the whole wedding, and as far as she was concerned, it never even happened. And then Haskins began his deviling, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, I can see the right on both sides, though. I can see a lot of wrong on both sides. Pride, high-handedness, mule-headed stubbornness. You know, I've never seen two grown people more in need of a good hiding. Are you going to help us, Mr. Bone? Well, are you going to help us? Well, the salt wagon would make too much noise, and Haskins would be on us before we went 100 yards. We're just going to have to leave it behind. I'm not going without that salt. But, of course, that is none of your concern, Mr. Boone. You just sneak right off. Bless? But it's not the salt that you care about. It's uh, besting Warren Haskins, isn't it? That's right, and he's been working for it. And you'd starve yourself half to death and go without water that's for a right, week that's before you'd give in? That's well, right. Well, that's your privilege. Why ask your little sister to do it, too? You're right. I can manage myself. She can't do it alone. But that's certainly no concern of yours. Uh, women are unscrupulous. I mean, they, they play on your emotion, they, they assail your courage, and they try to make you feel responsible for, for all their foolhardy adventures. Anything, absolutely anything, to get their own way. Do you feel a little responsible, David? No, I don't, but... Well, they're not going to get very far on their own now, are they? But anyway, they've got us over a barrel. How do you mean? Well, suppose they get away with assault, and Haskins finds us here. Oh, yes, and he's going to be pretty furious with only us to take it out on. Actually, you know, we could probably get away from here and be miles away by, by morning. Well, leave our rifles behind. I'd hate to be in this country without them. Well, what do you think are our chances of getting our rifles back? Pretty slim. I'm sure he's sitting up there right now waiting for us to try it. I see what you mean. They do have us over a barrel. That. What are you doing here? We don't need your help. If you don't keep your voice down, there won't be any point in hitching them up. David? We're going to walk our way out through those woods until we get in the open. At least that way we'll have a chance. Come on. What are you doing here? I heard a noise. Went to have a look. They left with the wagon. tree didn't fall down there by itself. Mr. Haskins. Well, isn't there another way to go? Not with the wagon. That's why he was sure you weren't going to place tonight. Fire. It's the cabin. I warned you, Theodora. And you just wouldn't listen. You haven't got any food. You haven't got any water. And now you haven't got any shelter. Are you about ready to give this foolishness up and come on home?
You get off my property, Mr. Haskins. A lover's quarrel, Dad? It's gotten a little bit out of hand. He's one, Ted. No, he hasn't. No, no, no! What can we do? We'll rebuild. Rebuild. How? I don't know how, but I really can't. I can't let him win. I can't let him get away with this. Didn't I see a keg of gunpowder in the mine? Yeah, Pa used to keep it there for blasting. And a whale oil lamp? Have you got any more of that oil? Yes, why? Think maybe I have a notion that might turn the tables on Mr. Haskins. You do? Might be a little dangerous. You mean you could hurt Warren Haskins? Well, it just might send him packing with his tail tucked between his legs. Then go get him. About six holes, about 15 inches apart, about two feet deep, with a downward angle so they'll hold gunpowder. Yes, sir. We're going to need some rags. Rags? Oh, what about those salt sacks? That'll do fine. Well, how many? Well, I'm going to need about 12 strips, sort of thin, sort of like wicks, about so long. You'll have them. Oh, I'm going to need four more, same length, only eight inches wide. Right. Uh, is it permitted to inquire about right uh, what it is we're creating? Well, Make six holes in the wall here. Fifteen inches wide, I suppose. Oh, that's what the man said. do, when they get to this exact spot, I'm going to explode these walls. And if my plan works as I hope, some of them will be buried by piles of salt. And the rest will be rendered helpless by clouds of powdered salt. Dad, let me ask you, where are we going to be when this happens? Well, we'll be back there. We'll have some more rags to go over our nose and mouth so we can breathe. We'll come out and get their firearms before they can recover. How are you going to get them all in here? I mean, all at one time. We're going to try to get him riled up. Uh, it's the risky part, like this whole plan. Everything has to go just so, no hitches, or the whole thing will fall apart. The explosion. Couldn't that be dangerous? Couldn't somebody get hurt? Or even worse? Well, it's possible some of them will, but we'll be safe. Of course, all David and I want is to recover our firearms, but your grievance is much bigger. So if you don't want to go through with it, but I must warn you, if it misfires, Haskins is going to be madder than a wounded grizzly. Well, I don't care about him. I mean, I, I don't care about that. Of course we're going to go through with it. Fine. We've got a lot of work to do before daylight. He's the man. Some wicks. These ready? Yes. Here are the wicks. Oh. 
This is really very ingenious, but uh, I would say that his chances of success are less than certain. I would say that's a tolerable reckon. It's a water barrel. Do you think you're finished before sunup? Uh, I think so. Why don't you girls give David a hand? I'll be back as soon as I can. Uh, Ted, why don't you take these? Hey, Joe. Did you hear anything? No, I didn't hear anything. Sounded like somebody skulking around out there. Better take a look. Sit out this way. I'd give anything to see Haskins face when he finds out it's gone. All right. Let's get up. Let's get up here. Everything all right, Tumbra? Yeah, everything seems all right. What's the matter with you? Water here salted. Salted? <coughs> Wait, I uh, I remember. There was two kegs of water. What? Last night when I thought I heard something, I noticed there was two kegs of water. It was sort of funny, but then I'd blast it. They've exchanged all fresh water for salt water. Blasted. Get up! Dan, they're coming. They're furious. Oh, fine. That's just what we want them to do. Now, you go on and get in the back. Get those wet cloths, put them over your nose and mouth so you can breathe when it explodes and stay down. Yeah, but what about you? I've got a few things to finish up. I'll be back in time. But Dan, don't you think that we should try to reason with them? Get started, David. Theodora! Sure, they're all inside, but it could be a trap. It could be. They can't do much without guns, can they? No. Theodora! 
I know you're in there. And you've got the fresh water, and I mean to have it. It's all water. And it's at our well and our property. And, and we can do it to whatever we please, and we don't please to give it to you. If you wise, you just get right off our property. Theodora, I warn you. I warn you to bring that water out here now. Because if I have to come on inside and get it, some folks are liable to get hurt. I guarantee you somebody will get hurt if you try to come in here. All right. We're going on in. Haskins, I advise you to stay right where you are. I'm telling you something funny going on here. No. He's bluffing. about it all the time. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, if I had, you might not have acted your part so well. Well, why did you... Why? Well, I think that that's a... That's a dirty trick. On who? <sighs> Theodora. Done all that work just to show Mrs. Haskins and me what a couple of mules we've been. You're a remarkably devious man, Mr. Boone. Oh, listen to the pot calling the kettle. Uh, so the mine is all yours now. Oh, they insisted. It was the, the simplest, simplest way to end. <laughs> My man will build a log house and they'll work the mine. And the money from the mine will pay for a trip to Europe. It's all those wonderful places. How soon will you be leaving? Oh, two or three weeks, I expect. Well, you could come by Boonesboro, and, well, David will be there, and he can tell you about Europe, sort of prepare you for your trip. Oh, will you be there then? Well, I do, I do have uh, a few more maps to uh, do, but I'm sure that... Well, you'll be back by then, David. Mrs. Boone and I'd like for you to come and stay with us as long as you like, Miss Leslie. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I'd really be looking forward to that. Yes. Uh, will you have any difficulty marketing all that salt? No, I'll market it myself. At a profit, Mr. Haskins. At a fair profit, Theodora. At no profit, Mr. Haskins. We'll discuss it later, in private. There's nothing to discuss. Theodora! You will not make a profit on your own sister-in-law. You are trying my patience, Theodora. Mr. Haskins, I have just begun. 